This episode of Repping the State Line podcast with John, George, and Josh is sponsored by The Mortgage Dad. Working with George's team gives you an access to an unmatched menu of mortgage programs and over 100 years of combined mortgage experience. Skip the stress, love your mortgage experience, and get home with George. Visit www.homewithgeorge.com, NMLS ID 443967. And we're back. With the oh. John Vegas Broda, well, brought brought bringing you John live from all the way, many states away, and two Dude. hours earlier. Thank you for being up early with us, John. Welcome. We're back. Oh my goodness, what are you guys doing? Where did you get that picture from? You're stalking my Facebook again, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Just, just it's to never, make, it's never good the second time. Just make sure. Let's, no. let's see. Oh, there it is again. We got a Macklemore. Macklemore in the house. Look at him. Him and his beautiful wife. Just living it up. I'm assuming Vanessa is sleeping still because you yes, guys yes, are yes. just partying like rock out stars. on the town like a true rock star himself. Just, I am, just I'm taking it you, all in. I'm telling you guys. I am so excited being here at EXPCon 2024 in Vegas, Mandalay Bay, just having the time of our lives. We are just, I mean, I'm meeting great people. I'm learning amazing things. I'm having a blast. Brought my, was able to bring my wife with me. Like you see that picture. We're at the ice bar last night. Just amazing experience. Just crushing it. Look at that. I mean, and like I was saying with that picture, you know, with Benice, oh my goodness. I just had a call try cutting in on me. I'm sorry, guys. So with that, I am putting on my focus. There we go. Do not disturb is on the house. Nobody's going to cut it anymore. Um, like I was saying, you know, on my Facebook, you guys stole that picture, my profile picture. Vanessa's like, you got to take a picture in the throne. I'm like, all right. And I put on a caption. I made her come with me because I put the caption is the king is only as strong as the queen he chooses to share his kingdom with. And I mean, I would not be here today if it was not for my wife and her support. So I want to thank my wife for putting up with all my BS, all the late hours, all that craziness. But she gets the perks too. She gets to come to Vegas. There you go. So, and I wish you boys were here. So, so you're in Vegas and you have you played yet? I have not. Still haven't played three days and he hasn't played a, I'm not, at all. I'm not a big gambler. You know, I mean, Benice did... Benice did do what her our boss told her to put 20 on red. And? And she put it on red and black came up. Uh, she should have so, done black. I always do black. So, all right. You've and been that was it. And I kept saying, I kept saying black over and over and over again. Every time I kept saying it, black would come up. <laughs> black? Yeah. I, 20 black is my number. That's my number. Well, 20 black came up three times last night. Jeez, you should have played it. You'd be rich right now. 20 black. That's Man funny. black, baby. Um, all right. So you've been to Vegas, ah, geez, a slew of times, right? Um, what makes this trip to Vegas the most special? Because oh. I feel like this, this is just really, really special trip for you. Well, um, yeah, I've got, I've had some great experience here. Like, uh, granted, it's a convention. So we have 89,000 agents nation worldwide we're in 24 different markets and we're having our convention and all, all real estate companies hold these big conventions but for me to come here i got the opportunity i'm i don't brag a lot because it's you know you don't brag about things that you get selected for but i'm on the um, um agent um advisory council for the state of illinois and i got to um be part of a invitation only with the national council where we get to choose ideas we get to figure things out we get to um, help bridge a gap between the realtors that are working every day and the corporation that we all hang our license with so i got some swag on here i'm a certified mentor i got to meet a lot of those people for my program just 
you know, being in a room with less than a hundred leaders for this company and being able to meet with the um, CEO who's changed my life. I mean, and he sat and talked with you and he's like, just like that with everybody he meets just walking around. It's just, it's just been a great experience. And he's the kind of guy like on our workplace, you send him a message, he responds. That's and he's cool. like a founder of this company, but he'll respond to everything no matter what you ask. So just I've interacted with him many times over the last three years, but getting to finally meet him in person, shake his hand, have a drink with him, talk with him for a bit. It was just a great time. So, I mean, I've got a lot of great ideas on how I'm going to help my clients and help you guys have, get more referrals and use some of this new technology to our advantage. But it's just been a great time. And then you get a vacation out of it, too. I mean, it's it's nice to get away for a week. But last well, night I'm sitting by the pool and I'm doing comps for, you know, clients back home. <laughs> Work anywhere, right? There you go. That's awesome. Well, I'll be there on Friday. I'll, I'm going to pass. You're going to pass the baton to me. I'm coming on Friday. No, I, I actually land Friday morning at 530 in the morning and you'll be heading over here. <laughs> yep. Yep. I'll be flying there. Fr- not that early, but Friday morning. It should be a good weekend, I hope. We got a lot of things planned. Guess who does not get to go to Vegas? By choice. Josh. He should. You should come with. Let's go you Friday. You should be here, Josh. Yeah. Come on Friday. This guy. But it's okay. I can't, man. Exactly. My kid has two more football games left. They they just clinched a spot in the playoffs. Like I actually have a, a guy's bus trip to Notre Dame on Halloween weekend. I might not get to go to. Wow. Personal. Who are they playing? Personal. Uh, California. Ooh, Cal, huh? But it's personal, right? Because if my kid makes the championship football game, I'm not missing it. Yeah, of course not. I'm just not. Like, it's just it's one of those things, right? And so uh, that weekend, that Saturday will be bittersweet. Either I get to go to the game and enjoy myself and do all that, or, you know, I get to watch my kid play for a championship, which is... Pretty cool too. So so let's let's rewind. What did we do this last week, John? I know you had a crazy probable end of year last week before you flew out there, but any any successes, things that you did? Oh, we um, meet in great food, drinking at great bars. I've learned there's not enough bourbon in the world to make a drink I don't like. Um, <clears throat> no, it's just been it's just been a great time here. Just classes and hanging out, a little swag. You know, having fun, meeting some great people. So that's what we've done. Me and Benice, though, like I said, the minus five bar. If you're ever at Mandalay Bay, do the experience. Pay for the experience. We talked about this before experiences last week um, when we had double T on. I mean, we looked at it and we're like, oh, you could just go in, you know, and pay this ticket price and go in and then buy some cocktails and do stuff. Or you can do the extreme package, which was get in there you get the upgrades to those fur coach you saw us in which i'm telling you i'm getting one of those looks great with my black suit um and the faux fur for people that are complaining it's not it is yeah there it is again <laughs> it is not real fur it's a faux fur uh-huh. so we're not hurting any animals we're just having fun <laughs> um, but we went in there you're drinking your drink out of an ice yeah glass. ice glass everything's ice. i mean and Everything's ice. The whole place was ice. I got some great pictures of it. And then you go inside by the fireplace. You're in all of a sudden you're in 1923. You're in a speakeasy, and it was just amazing. So, I mean, just having a great old time with it. Um, we did some Japanese food last night. Ooh, which um, where would you guys go? We went to Kumi. Kumi, okay. Right here. So I did. I did their Kumi Kazi roll. Ooh. And I did a citrus. I did a citrus salad. Too soon. Um, and Benice did their shrimp fried rice, which was freaking amazing. It was the best shrimp fried rice I ever had. So have you made it outside of Mandalay Bay yet? I have not, but Denise went exploring on the strip yesterday. Ooh, where did she go? She was, she took the, she went over to MGM and she hopped on the tram. She went down to New York, New York. She, she walked everywhere. I mean, I was in classes all day. That's why I'm here. I'm here to learn. So I'm here in classes. I'm working. She's vacationing the way it should be. She also said and that if uh, you get lost, just follow the locals. You want to pull that picture up? Yeah. You should pull that picture up. That was a great picture. <clears throat> Benice was I walking, don't have it. Benice was walking <laughs> up on the walkways. And um, there were some showgirls walking in front of her. Oh. Like, from one hotel to the other. Like in their, full, in their full dresses. I got it right here. So, 
Is it in the? Is it in our texts? Hold on. It's on Benice's page. I got it right here. I got, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. You got it. I got it. Wait, do you have it? I got it. Okay. I texted it to you. you guys. It. Oh. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, I just got a text from Josh. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, they, just follow the locals. Follow the locals, Renice. Follow yep, the locals. Pro, Renice's pro tip for Vegas, when you're lost, follow the locals. So, <laughs> so, but, it, I mean, it was, it was fun. She's having a blast. I'm having a blast. It's just, oh, there's an Irish pub here. And um, I got to have a traditional Irish breakfast. I felt like I was back home in sunny side. Scotch egg? <laughs> Huh? No, not scotch eggs. It's it's a full thing. It's the bangers, the rashers, um, the black pudding, the eggs. I'm gonna have to tell. Um, I'm gonna have to tell. Uh, tell your friend over at. Um, my gosh, what's that restaurant? We hope got? and anchor. Yeah, hope and hope anchor. anchor. You're cheating on them. Well, hope and anchor is an English pub. This is an Irish <laughs> pub. It's a difference. It's better though. Hope and anchor is the bomb. Um, okay. Different hope countries. Anchor doesn't different have a countries. traditional Irish breakfast. Different okay, countries. So moving on. <laughs> different countries. Moving on. Um, I have a question. Did yes. you tell your wife to have Greenberg's Deli? I did send her the text, but she was already on her way back. That's terrible. That was a mistake. She's going to regret that decision. Dude, she has like four more days. She better go back. Greenberg's Deli in New York, New York. Best sandwiches in Vegas. Hands down. Matzo ball soup. Oh, oh. You talk about soup, Greenberg's Deli. They have the best soup. Well, if I was in Vegas, I'd try it. You should go. You can come. I can get you a flight Friday. Come join us. Too poor. Uh, no. Too poor now. No. Okay. Moving on. Um, moving so, on up, moving so you're in Vegas. You're enjoying life. You haven't played yet, so you're still not broke. Um, and Venice has not taken any of my suggestions so far. That's a good start. Good start to the week. Here we go. Josh, what about you? How was your week? Oh, my week has, uh, geez, my week's always busy, you know, except for I no longer have golf like on Mondays, which it was 87 degrees on Monday. Very upset. I wasn't playing golf, um, but uh, I took my kid Did fishing. You, took, it well, is amazing. It was 87 there. It was 70 degrees when I landed here. Nice. On Monday. Nice. Crazy. So it was It was a little chilly here when I got here. Yeah, so I took to my kid. I took my kid fishing. Yeah, and then last night we had football and baseball. Last fall baseball game for the league. I'm excited. Thank you. Um, and then uh, we had a baseball tournament this past weekend, and you don't really know, but I mean, I think we've talked about it. How there's like rankings for new yep. sports. We've talked about it on the podcast before. We're a nine U triple A team. And this tournament was an open tournament in Bettendorf, Iowa. Well, we played a 10U majors team and two 10U AAA teams. And we went 0 and 3, but we hung with them all pretty good. I mean, we were beating the majors team 7 to 5 at one point in time. Wow. Ended up losing 9 7. So, I mean, I'm not mad about it. Right. Sure, sure. And the second game we lost like 6 to. Uh, eight six, so we were in that Not game. Bad. The second team was a top tier team that was literally every kid was throughout the state of Iowa. They don't practice; they just come together and play a game. If that says anything, <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> that's crazy. <laughs> it's kind of like a makeshift AAA hockey team. You know what I'm saying, John? Yeah. So they just come. They just come play. Yep. And so we had that, and then Sunday. Watched a lot of football. It was awesome. But other than that, that's all I really did. Me on oh, the other hand. I lied. Real quick. I forgot. Friday night, I played my alumni baseball game. Oh, yeah. In Iowa. How did that in go? In Iowa. Yeah, how did that go? I caught one inning. No pass balls. Three blocked baseballs. Super happy. Played first base two innings. And I got two at bats. The first at bat, I'm in there in the box, right? This dude. And he whiffed. No, no, no. Oh. 93 at my hands. You know the last time I seen 93 miles an hour at my hands? Long time. I took it to a deep full count, right? A couple foul balls. Uh, finally, he grooved a fastball on the outside corner. 
I put it in play. I got out, but I put it in play at 93. I was happy with that. There you go. And then my second at bat, I took it to full count again, and I struck struck out. out. Yeah. But I only saw... And the worst part is he was throwing 88. So I saw 93 and 88. We didn't see a single ball slower than 88 miles an hour on Friday. That's crazy. And how old is he? These kids are 20 years old. Oh, you so you were playing against kids. We played the actual college oh. team. The alumni played oh. the actual <clears throat> college team. Wow. Is so, that even fair? Well, we we uh we're tied five to five going in the eighth inning. Dang. Ended up losing ten to five, but <coughs> we were tied five five. You guys tried. <laughs> we, you guys we tried. were close. It was funny because we had there's like 30 guys there. Two of them had just finished their pro seasons. And so the guy that finished his pros, it was a pitcher, came out just throwing 95 miles an hour <laughs> against this college. These college kids had no clue what to do with 95. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so they, they didn't score to like the fourth inning. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> when we threw a, a lefty that hasn't pitched in 10 years, that was so throwing are you the 72. Only, are you the only one that's lost a touch since college? No. No? No. Half the team? Well, so it's anyone that has graduated, right, previous? Yeah. And so... I was like the second to oldest guy. Oh, there. was Bob Euchre on the team? Did he come back too? Bob Euchre. I don't know. Like my 90, buddy Bob? 90, 90 year old. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, anybody can come back and play, you said. So, any, well, any like I real old guys come no, back? No, that, that went to Clark, obviously. <clears throat> I know. Oh I'm God. just kidding. God. All right. Josh, but yes. You didn't know who Bob Euchre was? I know who Bob Euchre is. The Brewers. All right. But yeah, but my wife came and supported me and did that. Never once complained. We were out till wee hours of the night with the kids, and she just wore it like a champ. So That's awesome. I was excited. I was happy. And then, and when it was all done, Mason said to you, he "Goes well, Dad. I'm way better at baseball than you." <laughs> no, he was like, "Dang, Dad, you actually blocked baseballs? Holy cow!" Yeah, he was like shocked that I played as well as I did. Wow, look at you. So it was a cool it was a cool like father son moment where he's like, Dang dude, you still got it. I said, Yeah, I know. Well well I <laughs> spent the last week in what I call COVID jail. Uh for those that don't know, the day after we recorded our episode last week, I was po- COVID positive and I got hit pretty hard. I'm still trying to recover fully. I still have a cough, still have COVID brain, as I like to call it, where I'm a little slow, but he's always slow. Yeah, but we know that's why we had two takes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that there you go. Deja vu. Yeah. So I spent the entire last week in my basement and locked in the confines of our guest room to not infect anybody. And I tried to make it out, and I did on Sunday. Went to the Bears game. And I kind of regret it. I'm not going to lie. Um, I mean, I don't regret seeing my family and enjoying the game, but I was not feeling good and exhausted afterwards. So um, I should have probably stayed back. It's okay. You live, you learn. But moving on. But we got to talk about that elephant. What elephant? Well, Monday night with the Jets playing Kansas City, last week with the Bears. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, nice shot. Bless you. Thank you. The Bears suck. The Jets suck. The Jets look like a no, team. No, well, the, the, the Jets looked really good there. I mean, I'm watching the game. We just got in. We were having some food. And um, I was eating New York-style pizza watching the Jets game. It was amazing. Oh, there you um, go. But what got me, though, was like the BS at the end. I'm sorry. that The play calling was bad. Everything was bad. It was like... God forbid the crappy rookie beats the NFL star. That's just how it is. So that's what I'm saying. I said my piece. We can move on. There you the go. rookie, Zach Wilson, isn't a rookie. He's a third year. He's, yeah. he's the same as Fields. He was the same draft well, class no, as Fields. He's, he's actually better than Fields because obviously you saw what he put up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, while you're in Vegas, can you go to a sports book and can we each put like five grand down on the Bears to be the first, the, the worst in the NFL again? Do you think they have those odds? Oh, the Bears have to, the Bears have to put the tank in now. They got to like lose every game for the season. They got to go all the way with They zero. play tomorrow. They have two Thursday night games? Mm-hmm. Why? That's the, that's the schedule they drew. They play tomorrow. 
That sounds terrible. Are you going? At, no, it's they, at Washington. The NFL thought that Fields was going to be great too this year. He still is. Just wait. He looked good this week. He looked very good. His what, statistics his two, were his two picks. Uh, no, his three hundred thirty-five yards and four touchdowns and two picks. In 335 yards and four touchdowns. It was the Broncos. So George. The Broncos. So George, What's up? George. Yes. Who did you enjoy the game with on Sunday? Ooh. I know you had a couple of special guests. I did. Jenny and Linda were my guests. And I gave them a tour of all that we do when we go to Bear Games. We didn't do just tailgate. Um, we started at breakfast at Lou Mitchell's. And if you oh, have nice. it... Lou yeah. Mitchell's, I thought you were going to uh, Kitty O'Shea's. No, we did. Just wait. We started with breakfast at Lou Mitchell's. Lou Mitchell's, if you haven't been, is 100 years old this year, 100th anniversary. They are one of the first restaurants that is on Route 66 at the start of Route 66. So if you ever do that, that drive to the West Coast, you'll want to start at Lou Mitchell's. It's a great diner that's been there forever. The people on game days, we, they they do a rah rah speech every time. Um, everybody in there is going to the game. It's a great breakfast. Um, we started there. Then we went over to K- Kitty O'Shea's. We did several rounds of drinks and met up with everybody else that was going to the game. And then we went to the tailgate and we spent a little time at the tailgate. Did a couple of drinks there and then made it into the stadium just before kickoff. It was like the perfect. Showed them everything that we normally would do. We either did through the tailgate or Kitty O'Shea's or Lou Mitchell's, and we did all three. We got up. Um, I was picked up at 6.15 early, and we made it through all that, and then back home after the game. It was a really exciting game. We were cheering for pretty much the entire game. I mean, it didn't. they didn't lose till the very end, so I was happy with uh, – I would much rather have – an exciting game where you're cheering and there's offense and things happening and you lose in the end, then a boring game where you just lose all the way through. So I, I couldn't, I couldn't be more than happy with how it turned out for oh, it sounds like a great time. Yeah. Linda and Jenny had a blast. There was cheering and, and fun the entire game. Hold on just a bad second, outcome. I gotta mute myself. So yeah, that was a good time. We got to, Got to show them um, a real NFL game. That was their fir- first game, Bears game ever, and um, that was that was my weekend really. And now I'm still recovering and getting ready for Vegas this weekend. Did anybody notice George's statements when he said, "I would rather have a very exciting game and lose than watch a very boring game and lose"? Yeah, story yeah. about story of the Bears' life. They always lose. And guess who's on the chopping block this week? Matt Eberflus. Yeah. And he should have been canned 30 seconds after the last game. Correct. 100% agree. They're saying that he's on the chopping block because it's a mini buy after a Thursday game. But then my question is, who's going to take over? Your OC? I don't care. I'll take over. You can call plays better than the Bears do. That I I am a hundred percent convinced that just the run problem is not just run a bootleg fields. option. I am a hundred percent convinced it's not fields; it's coaching. And well, if you have yeah, last week was proof in in the pudding. Guy had a career day, and the coach is still found a way to lose. That was his best numbers. This is his first three hundred yard passing game, four touchdowns. He stayed in the pocket. He did everything right. That that. Uh, the, he only had one interception, by the way, not two. He had a fumble because he had oh. off the edge. The guy, yeah, zero block. Yes, he turns around. He turns around, and the guy's in his face. I mean, what do you do there? That every quarterback's going to fumble there. And he threw one interception on a miscommunicated route by the tight end that ran the wrong route. Sucks, sucks big time. But should have never been in that position in the first place. Max. My my thought my my frustration hundred percent coaching. As soon as the Bears went up twenty eight seven, they went into their prevent defense and prevent offense. They just they, they decided to take the ball they away didn't from score Justin Fields. A single point in the second half. Yeah, they did. They scored seven. Oh, seven. Okay, seven. After that touchdown, when it was twenty eight seven, the Bears took the put the handcuffs back on Fields. Said you're done. 
Never mind the fact that you just threw four touchdowns for us. You're done, and they lost. Because they stopped going with what was taking them to a winning margin of 21 points. It's it's the coaching's atrocious. It needs to go. It's okay. 100%. I, I feel the pain. I'm an Iowa Hawkeye fan, which I don't know if you guys saw. Our new starting quarterback that transferred from Michigan is now hurt. Torn ACL. Oh, yeah. McNamara. I watched Gone. it. Gone. I watched it. Gone. Non-contact. Didn't McNamara came from Michigan? Yeah. No kidding. Was he? So he got hurt at Michigan. <laughs> he got hurt at Michigan, and then he lost his starting job. Lost he got hurt. A, never saw the field ever again. And then he transferred to Iowa. They transferred. And Iowa. then he tore his ACL. Yep. Non-contact too. Yeah, I remember watching that. Horrible. Pilot. Yeah. It's okay. But we did what? beat Michigan State, so it it turned out pretty well. Yeah, but now what? I don't know, man. It's hard. It's hard being. Did Iowa you fan. Did you see the rumors that Rodgers wants to come back this year, dude? After week seven. Oh. After week seven, John. He, he said he's going to come back. He's working. He's trying. He's hustling. He's not even walking around with a boot anymore. Let's go. That's insane. Dude, he said at because they have a buy in week week uh, seven. Yeah, but they're gonna they're yeah. not gonna win a game until then. So they they'd be stupid to play him. If you're I, if you're I, I don't think it if you're I, one I don't and think, six, I don't what think the hell they, matters? I don't, I don't think they care. I think it's it's more of the principle. No, it's they should be smart and make no, sure I he's think good it, to go. I think I think it's, I think no, it's the I, I would say. And I mean, after, let's, let's let's bring our let's that. bring our Jets expert on on camera. And Jets expert wait, wait, John. Wait, 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 wait. Zach Wilson played really well. That that was the best game of Zach Wilson's career. Now can he build on that? And this brought to you by our Jets expert John Broda. John Las like Vegas said, Broda. Like I said, you know Aaron's going to come back. He's it's the principle of him saying. Everybody's saying he's old, he's hurt, it's a season-ending injury, and he wants to show that pure will and determination is going to get taken care of it. He might only come in, he might only come in and play three more plays and then be back off, but he's going to show that he's he's still there. He's going to be on the sidelines every week. He's going to help Zach every week, and the team's just going to get better. I mean, yeah, our hopes for like the super bomb of a season, it's, you know, it's there. We're like, okay, shit happens. We're gonna do it, but we're dealing. Do, do you believe that uh, go, we're building. going into last week, there was there was some talk about mutiny with the team because they were sticking with Zach Wilson? Boy, those players look stupid after the way he played. It, understandable. Yeah. But it's the principle. It's the no, principle no, I, of the matter. I'm just saying the the side. Another side story to the whole Jets season. Yeah, is but that, that players dude, wanted wanted. Did not want Zach Wilson, and the coach is the only one that stood by him. And that dude was good throwing reason. that dude was throwing darts on Sunday night. Yeah, he was darts. I think he, he finally said, back. "Fuck it, I'm gonna go back to how I used to play quarterback." Oh. Shocker! Shocker! What happens when you let a quarterback play his quarterback and be a quarterback? Huh? I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Wait, wait. Oh, wait. Chicago. As you can tell, it's getting loud here. Oh, That's poor the thing. <laughs> you poor thing. Where's, so where's our special guest? Is he still there? You said we had a special guest that you were bringing from Vegas. Is he still there? My special guest? No, he kept walking earlier. Oh, that that's that's sad. But here, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys though. I'm gonna turn my cam my phone around real quick. Here's all the XP agents coming. There you go. Two convention this morning. It's just craziness here now. It's getting louder and louder. Everybody's walking. Everybody's having fun. And it's just excitement everywhere you turn around here. Well, if you need us to let you go, it's not a problem. We could take it from here and wrap up the episode. We just wanted to make sure you were No, I'm just trying to let the crowd pass by, and then I'll be able to talk with you guys because I have a hard time hearing you while they're passing through. I got you. Hey, John, have you seen my friend Kayla Middleton yet? What was that, Josh? Have you seen my friend Kayla Middleton? I have not yet. She's from I mean, Tennessee. The the Nashville rep. It is. I know, I, and I've talked to her multiple times because so she has family in Roscoe. Yeah, she's from she's, so, from she's from Roscoe. She went to Hananiga. Right, but I haven't seen her yet. But that's the funny thing is, like, I'm I haven't met, I've only seen one person besides Dan from Roscoe that I know. Um, you know what I mean? That's here, but I'm like I've known Dan for years, so that's why his wife is out here too with him. So we hung out Monday night at the party, the launch party, had some drinks, did that kind of stuff. 
But um, oh, Venice was I just was ecstatic, was wasn't she? Huh? I said Venice was just ecstatic to hang out with Dan, wasn't she? Oh, she loves Dan. I mean, yeah. we go camping with Dan and his wife all the time. That's what I mean. That's awesome. Probably eased her, eased well, her week. You said, the way you said that, it sounded very sarcastic. I'm no. just like, I don't want to throw any shade here. You know what I mean? Like, you no, 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 no. I mean, the guy still does real estate, right? <laughs> yes. Wait, he, does, he still does real estate? <laughs> in in Rockford or in Florida? Because isn't he going to go to Florida? Oh. He does both now. There you go. He does both now, and he's they're looking to move to the West Coast of Florida. There you go. West Coast. So, like... Oh. Like, uh, but I like I like the East Coast myself. I'm a Cocoa Beach guy. I like the Space Coast. I like Brevard County. That's where I. That was my happy places in Florida. I don't my, know. I kind of. Coach, Randy Wooters. He's down there in Florida. He's over in Palm Bay. And you're a Central Florida. Uh, I have I have a special place in my heart for East, the Miami area, the Sunny Isles area, the Central. Well, that's obviously, awesome Disney. You got to start planning right now, guys. Exp Con 2024. Is going to be in Miami. Boom! I've we I can get us a condo. The three of us can live in a condo. That's what he said for Vegas. Well, <laughs> okay. Things happen. Okay. You triple book. Leave alone. I did triple book, and I got COVID on top of it. The, do, and he got COVID. There's no way I wouldn't have been able to go. Anyways, because I was still I I wasn't symptom free till Thursday, so we were and planning on leaving on Friday. None of us got it. Yeah, thank the Lord. I was more than anything. I was upset after being getting the positive test for you guys because we recorded right here, and maybe it's because I didn't touch the food. Remember, you picked up the John picked up the food, and he's like, "Hey, put the food on." I'm like, "You know what? I'd rather not touch the food just in case. I don't want to get anybody sick." Maybe that is what saved it. So you're welcome. You're welcome, John. That you're in Vegas enjoying with non-COVID because. I was thinking it's okay. It's okay. Smart. George is going to hook it up <coughs> for me and Kelsey December 2nd at the Marquee Hotel. What Mark Owen oh, in for that concert? Really? Wrigley? Yeah. What concert? What concert are you going yeah, to? The Cooper Allen concert. Oh, I don't care. About oh, that. nice. Yeah. Who's he's Cooper coming. Allen? He, it's that country artist. That, like, he's pretty new. Uh, oh, is he playing, the guy that plays the banjo that, with the beard? And No. 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 I would go see his concert. Yeah, no. He's he, got a uh, second song out. Did you I, see that? I did. But he's playing at Joe's on Weed Street, which is just south of Wrigley. Wrigley. Cool. That's so it's cool. okay. George is going to make up for it and hook me up with this hotel. That's what that's what he's going to do. What do I owe you? Like, I was already hooking you up. I, I didn't get to go to Vegas. That's You can come. I told you. I'll book you a flight. Come with me Friday. <laughs> we'll, we'll get you a rollaway cot for our room. It'll be perfect. <laughs> I'll just sleep in the bathtub. <laughs> just sleep in the bath. <laughs> we'll we'll I will pad tell the you, bathtub. The Mandalay Bay. Yeah. I mean the room. The room is a beautiful room too. That's I was dude. Just the Mandalay shot. Bay blows away the Luxor. I'm so glad it worked out that way for us. Unexpectedly. I'm happy that we were able to put you right at the spot because I'm sure it would have been a pain in the butt to walk over every day. Number one. Number two. Was it still it's only not fourteen dollars? I didn't charge anything. Does it feel like what? I didn't charge John for anything. I just hooked him up. Oh, it was nice. my it was my mistake. Well, did you hear what happened? <laughs> no. Okay, so when we booked it, we were all going to go, and I booked it with my. Special. Oh, so when you canceled, you canceled everything. No, when I canceled, or when I went to normally, you could check in on the mobile app with Hyatt or not Hyatt with uh, MGM. They have a mobile app. You just check in online, and then I just send John. John logs in as me, and he's got the digital key, and he's good to go. Well, their mobile app is down. So when I went to try to make sure everything was good and I was going to add him, give him access for the room, can't check in with the mobile app. And I, so I called the hotel and I said, hey, I got COVID. I can't go. But I was staying with John. We're there for the EXP conference. I need him to be able to check in. You can't do that. This is your comp. So you have to be the one to physically check in. I said, I can't. What do you want me to do? Well, we can cancel the room and then we'll rebook it in John's name at full rate. I'm like, that's ridiculous. So I immediately went online, found another, found at Mandalay Bay, comped, no problem. He checked in and I will never give MGM business again. That's how they treat their loyal members, apparently, is they screwed us because their mobile app. If their mobile app worked, it would have worked just fine. 
because you just check in online. Shout out technology fails. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it ruined everything. Their mobile app were going down. So did you whole... guys figure this all out like Sunday? Yeah. yeah. This was su- this was me panicking Sunday morning. At I was never panicking. First of all, this. I was never panicking because I knew I was panicking the whole time. Yeah, but because I thought I was going to be here and I was going to have to stay to ask Dan and Melissa if I could stay with them. <laughs> not not only not only did you not have any you issue, could, but you, you got a an pineapple upgrade. with you. There you go, upside down pineapple on the door. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I've, I've I've seen plenty of that going on around here too. So I probably would have found a place to land. <laughs> there you go. You just got to be open, right? There you but, go. Um, but no, I was never worried. Dude, oh, I forgot to tell you guys though too. If you're if you're in his area, come to the hotel next to Mandalay Bay. It's Del, Del, Delano. Delano on yeah. the 64th floor is the Skyfall, and I got some pictures of that up on my Facebook as well with video. Oh my goodness! The view of the strip that you get to see the is terrible. Were amazing. It was just an amazing time. That's awesome. Top of the world, man. All right. So this weekend, yes. In, oh, what's going in, on? This what weekend? we got going on this weekend, in Rockford? When I get home, this segment brought to you by our studio. You are my greatest adventure. You are my greatest adventure. This weekend, there are a couple uh, couple events here in the Rockford area. Uh, one, Jeff Dunham. Jeff Dunham's in town. Is in, in town. So he was in town last summer, and he was at ABC Supply outdoors. It was literally one of the hottest days. I want to say it was like beginning of July. Holy cow. I baked in there, but it was awesome. That's the day that the security guard working the concert was um, who I think is dating Annabelle. Do you know who I'm talking about? He's bald. Is it Joel Osteen? No, Joel Osteen, no. No. There's a guy that worked um, that worked security at ABC Supply. He works for a Beloit Cart, but he was working security that day. And Jeff Dunham called him out because he was doing something. And, he was st- and so his nickname was um, Melvin Melanoma because he had the bald head in the <laughs> direct sunlight. So now every time I see the guy, I'm like, hey, Mr. Melanoma, how you doing? And he, he he will never lose that. But anyways, that was Jeff Dunham concert. So the one thing I will say about Jeff Dunham, he got political at his show. And you know, like sometimes where you hear political jokes and you're like, yeah, that's funny. And then they move on. So he went further and he crossed the line. And then you'd like, okay, got it. And then he went further. And he crossed the line some more. And he did that about <laughs> for a half hour straight. And I was like, holy shnikes. And I was surprised that half the crowd didn't walk out. That's how. But no, it was. He's hilarious. But he was wholly political. His little puppet, the the old guy. I forget his name. But the old guy was dressed as Joe Biden. That's where his skit was. And it was, it was hysterical. So... Great show, Jeff Dunham in town this weekend again at the BMO, right? Yeah, the BMO. We also have another first Saturday. Smorgasbord. Smorgasbord at? It was at uh, Stockholm. Stockholm Inn. Stockholm Inn. Stockholm Inn, man. And then, One of the best home cooked food in the town. Yep. Yes. And then uh, I think the biggest thing in town, I would probably say, besides Jeff Dunham, is the Autumn in Arboretum. At the Arboretum, uh, Clem. Clem Arboretum. It's a whole fall weekend festival. So they have stuff on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, a slew of stuff, activities. So Friday, I have it up right now. So Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., free smartphone tours in scavenger hunt. Saturday from 9 to 4. And then Apple Talk and Tasting from 10 to 1130. There's a bulb fundraiser going on. Sunday, more smartphone tour scavenger hunt. Games and kids, autumn day. Uh, yeah, the whole weekend is just filled with activities at all times. 100%. Very, very kid friendly, too. Yes. Well, and I also want to add on to that now. Like we said, Jeff Dunham is Friday night. I'm shocked that they're able to tear down his show <laughs> and then set up Three Dog Night for Saturday. Three Dog Night, night Saturday. Saturday. Yes. They're in their fifth, you know, they're in their fifth decade. 50 years of them playing music and touring and they're coming right to our little town of Rockford. 
yeah. to play. I mean, if you like classic rock, and shout out to 96.7 The Eagle again, and our, our boy, boy Double T, I'm sure Double they're T. giving away tickets. To the yeah. So, I mean, if you don't, if you can't get tickets one, I mean, they're running between 46 bucks and $142, depending on where you want to sit. And I definitely think it's a band worth seeing. I mean, they've got a lot of great songs. They play a lot of stuff you probably don't realize that they play. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Because <laughs> we're 50 years of playing music. And then, um, did I see one more thing? There's an art thing going on this weekend, too. Uh, the fall art scene is going to be in full swing starting on Friday, going through Saturday. And it's at various locations all over Rockford. So you could go to artforeveryone.com if you want. If you're into local art and the art scene that's going on in our area, go check that out. Anything else first, Josh? Coming up this yes, weekend? Yes, there was. Hold on. I think I took a screenshot. I, ha- I have one thing to say before we call it an episode, but go. Let's let's wrap up this segment. Yeah, hold on. Hold. Brought to you by your friends... You're, you are my greatest adventure. I like that. It is, I think, the first one of the year. We are now in spooky season. Ooh. Oh. October 8th. Trunk or treat. The sixth annual trunk or treat at the Tinker Swiss Cottage Museum oh, nice. and Gardens. It's this first one of the season. I think it's the first one of the season. I haven't heard any other trunk or treats going on. There's. And, I know there's one in Roscoe in October 19th weekend. Yeah, but... Tinker Swiss Cottage is awesome. Super cool place. I think it's a, an awesome place to do a trunk or treat. Um, if we are available, definitely going. Oh, and look what's finished. Other way. The bar. The bar's done. The bar. So Over next. Where are all the bottles, George? They're inside. You want to oh, op- go ahead and op- okay. open, open it up. We could show the viewers. It's okay. Oh, are we not going to get a good view? You don't have your camera angle. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to switch. There it is. There you go. Look at that. We have our bourbon bar. Very nice. High-end bourbon bar. And then right in that space right there above it, I have a stave shelf coming. Do you know what a stave is? Do you know what a stave is, Josh? No. I do not. Uh, A stave? I know what a stave is. a, A bourbon stave is the rounded part of the barrel, like one... You know how it's pieces of wood that yeah. make it? So it's one okay. stave. So the front of the shelf is a stave, and then there's a shelf, and then below it is a wine rack that is like a wine rack where it's got the, the grooves so you can hang glasses, but it's meant for the... Oh, what's the name of them? Glenn, the, the snifters, the tasting glasses. Yeah, the tasting glasses. So above, right above... Oh, let's go back here. So right, right where Josh's face is, right there, you're going to have this stave shelf hanging where above it will be a shelf where I'm going to put all of my... Full of snifters. Rocks glasses. And then hanging below it will be the tasting glasses. So we're going to have the full, bur- full high-end bourbon bar. And on top of that, in the top of that, that um, cabinet, I built a custom serving tray. So you'll be able to take the serving tray out pour either a taste or a full rocks glass and then carry it to living room. We'll bring it in here next week. We're going to, we're going to tip it off next episode. We're going to have, we're going to cheers. I'm going to open one of the new bottles and we're going to start drinking some of this bourbon. How's that sound? No, sounds Sounds great. All right, there you go. Finally, Jesus. And we, one last thing I want to say before we call it an episode. I I just can't get over this picture. We it's so good. This <laughs> we're this, gonna pop some tag. This twenty dollars in my pocket. I vote that John makes this his picture on his website. Let me look at that. Really? That is that's who I want to my sell my house right there. He <laughs> is he is the man, the, the myth, myth, the, the legend. legend, Mr. Vegas, John. John. Las Vegas. Vegas. Broda. Broda. The oh, rock's the realtor goodness. himself. Buddy, have fun. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy your wife. Enjoy your family. Just, you deserve it. Rockstar.
Okay, that was enough. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, brother. Cheers. Till next was that time. Jim Lyon. No. Hey, do all the podcasty things. Like, share, subscribe. Do it all. Uh, let us know what your favorite place in Vegas is. And John, I before after I'm going to come up with a place that you have to hit before before the end of your trip, so that you guys hit it. Spearmint Rhino. No, I got better. I was place. two days left. That's all I got. All right. Well, you're going to have to go there with Venice. I'll make sure it's friendly to where you guys are at. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Peace out. All right. Have a good one, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.